Praise the Lord. Good evening. Good to see everyone tonight. Great to be in the house of the Lord. What a blessed day we've had today in the Lord. Wonderful service this morning. Looking forward to what God has in store for us tonight. You know, God is so faithful. I'm so thankful that he's faithful and that we can trust him. But just look forward to what God has in store for us. Invite the Holy Spirit to have his way in our midst tonight. Just want to share with you a portion of scripture i know you've heard it it's in first thessalonians 5 16 it's rejoice evermore pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you we have so much to be thankful for so thankful for what god's doing and how he has saved each one of us thankful to be part of the family of god so great to see everyone just again we just surrender all into the lord's hand join with me please as as we open with some prayer. Yes. Our precious Heavenly Father, we do praise yes. you. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for your love. Lord, that you loved us even when we were unlovable and unworthy of your love. We are unworthy of your love, but we thank you, Lord, that you love us, and we thank you, Lord, that we can put our hope and our trust in Jesus Christ and in Christ alone. And, Lord, you've promised you'll never fail us, you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. And we just thank you, Father God, that, Lord, we can just look to you. We know that our help and our strength comes from the Lord. And, Lord, we thank you again. We thank you for the wonderful service you blessed us with this morning. But, Lord, we need a fresh touch tonight. We need the fresh power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, as the words preached and the Spirit bear, we just pray that, Lord, you would receive all glory, honor, and praise. And we do pray for souls tonight. We pray that many souls would come to Jesus Christ before it's too late. Lord, have your way. And, Lord, we give you all the praise. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good evening, everyone. It is a blessing once again to be in the house of God. I'm glad to be here. Yes. I hope that you are too. And I hope that you come with your cup turned up ready to receive a blessing. But in order to receive a blessing, you have to be willing to be a blessing. Amen. You have to pour out that what God has filled you up with so that you can have room for more. Amen. If you're watching via live stream, we want to welcome you into our worship service as well. I want you to join right in as we 
just praise the Lord and the beauty of holiness tonight in song. Would you stand with us tonight and let's sing the unclouded day. Amen. Oh, they tell me I'm alone, far beyond the sky. Oh, they tell me I'm alone, far away. next song uh, I know what the song is because I'm sitting here looking at it and I'll tell you what I want to see people with smiles on their face this next song says when we all get to heaven some of you look like you're not going there tonight and I don't know about you but after this morning I ought to come back through a hurricane to get here and I just about did and I'm going to tell you something we come here and we dodging branches back and forth and I come here and some of you listen Karen come here back here in the back she's ready to worship but I told, I told her I said here comes Karen here's my cheerleader so I'm thankful for that so put a smile on your face when we sing this song will you I want to, I want to see you smile clap tell somebody you love them when we all get to heaven it's going to be great one of these days we'll sing the wondrous love of Jesus sing his mercy and his grace in the mansion bright and blessed he'll prepare for all when we all when we all get to heaven what a day what a day when we all when we all 
Praise the Lord, as it said, they will run and not be weary, and walk, and they shall not faint. And I was thinking about how Jesus made that statement in his word where he says, Come unto me, all that ye labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. We're about to do that in a moment when we come to a time of prayer, because I'm here to tell you, I know that my brothers and sisters, along with myself, go through trials and storms every day. And we, that's why it's good to come and assemble ourselves together, amen, that we can hear the Word preached under the anointing of the Spirit, that we can be lifted up for the next few days until Wednesday, then we come back. 
And then we pray in between, amen. But we want to remind you of just a few things here as far as announcement-wise, as far as the offering is concerned. Brother George wanted me to let you know. Now, he'll be back Thursday, but there'll still be somebody here if you need to come Monday through then and uh, be here for the regular time to take care of your offerings. And then, as it was mentioned several times, back here with the little milk jugs we have, you can do it there. You can PayPal and different things of that way to take care of your tithes and offerings. It's much appreciated, aided by the church. Amen. So uh, that's being said. Now let's get into some prayer requests here. And as our brother made mention this morning, this list grows. But you know God's able. There's nothing too great for God, amen. And I'm just waiting to see God heal and answer all these prayers. But we'll start out with there is a uh, Marshall Haddix. I want to remember that name here. Uh, Jim Robinson is doing some better, it says. Need to remember Barb Cash. Uh, Tina Lawson. We need to remember Bennett's upcoming surgery. Need to remember Betty, which is Phyllis Webb's sister, COPD. Allison Hubbard, which is Tony's cousin's wife, has liver failure. Remember Brother Brandenburg. Be with Paul Deaton, Josh Farley, Henry Likens with the hearing loss, Doug Krause, my, my, the list. Decline White, baby with beat breathing problems, issues. Chase Damron, 14-year-old with cancer. Uh, Tommy Meese, pancreatic cancer, and then we was handed a list tonight that uh, Carol Davis, he fell and is in the hospital, and then Joyce Angel is not feeling well, and then Sage Southers having seizures. So we want to remember all of these needs, and then you know if you will get a bulletin, you're going to see many, many more. And then there are those that are not mentioned, and as we have been starting to do around here, I know that we have a lot of unspoken requests by a raised hand. And God's able. Don't let Satan lie to you. He's wanting to come in and disrupt what was began this morning. You see, I don't even think I was dismissed this morning. What you do is, is you just go home and you get rejuvenated a little bit and you come back. And you're expecting the same God, the same Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. So church, if you will... Let us come and let us pray. And Brother Brian, would you come, my brother? I never get a call on you. So I'm going to call on you. Come on up here, brother. proves himself over and over. If you can and will, stand. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, humbly I come before you. What a service we had this morning. How you moved from the first voice that was spoken this morning. How sweet your spirit was and how you used each and every one of the singers, each and every one of the, the, the group we have here. And God, I just thank You for that. But God, we can't live on that. We've got to have a new touch from You. As the children of Israel went out, they couldn't gather manna for the whole week. They had to go out daily. So God, we've come to You right now because we need another touch from You. We have a lot that needs to be encouraged. We have a lot of sick that are afflicted that wish they could be here. I know and remember what it was like 
having to stay home because of everything going on, but how nice it was to come back into your house and really feel your Holy Spirit when we gather together and are in one accord together. And God, I know there's some out there that just wish they could be here, but due to illness or whatever it might be, they just don't feel like they can. I pray that you would encourage them, lift them up, send your Holy Spirit to do a work. And God, we look forward to having them back. But God, we need you right now. Brother Kevin needs you. He needs you to move on him. He needs you to speak through him tonight. May he just open his mouth and allow the Holy Spirit to just say what needs to be said. Not shy away from anything, but to stand strong because he knows he's in the palm of your hand. And God, we pray for those that are sick that was on the list. I can't remember them all, but God, I know you know each and every one of them. And you don't, even, you don't just know their name, you know every hair that's on their head. And I know that you're going to answer. God, I pray for the special singing and the, everything else that's remaining to be done here. May it be a sweet fragrance unto you. May you just anoint the, the singing that's left. That it, maybe it would reach down deep and touch somebody's heart tonight. Soften somebody that's become hard, that the devil's put dis- doubt and deceit in their heart. I pray that you would just soften. Maybe open their ears for the first time. But God, we need your help. We are a needy people because we need to lean on you every day. This world's bad, but God, we still know you're good and you are the only answer for anything that's going on. So help us to lean on you more. God, I pray that everything else that is said and done in this service would be uplifting to you, that you would receive honor and glory through everything that is said and done. And I ask you in the name of Jesus to rebuke the devil, that you would stop any kind of evil force that would try to distract or just cause somebody to go astray. I thank you again. I can't thank you enough for all that you do, but I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I was heavy burdened down The hand of Satan had me bound I called on Jesus He had compassion on me And when His love came rushing in And He took away my sin thank God I'm not that old boy I used to be oh I've been touched by those hands that were hanging on a tree on a song in my heart that keeps ringing it was Jesus who made me this way this world can take away all the things that I've worked for through the years they can take this little house I'm living in you know but there's one thing that I know they'll never take away from me that is Jesus who's living Oh! 
praise the Lord. I thank the Lord it was Jesus that made me that way. Grab hold and hang on, guys. Oh, I'm a traveler far from home. I get lost, but I press on. There's a mansion and streets of gold where we belong. Yes, there's a day coming soon when the old will be made new. Heaven's glory will shine like the morning before I. When we all see Jesus, when we all see Jesus, no more sickness, no more sadness, no more pain. When we all see Jesus face to face, then we'll sing with angels' voices, there will be
what a day, a glorious day that will be. What a day that will be, oh, when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me that promised land What a day What a glorious day That will be Oh, there'll be no sorrows there There'll be no more burdens Oh, to bear There'll be no Lord, there'll be no party over there, and forever I'm going to be with the one who died for me. Oh, what a day, what a glorious day, oh, that's going to be. What a day, oh, that will be, yes, when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the That promised land What a day Oh, glorious day What oh, that will be Y'all sing it with us yeah. Oh, what a day Oh, that will be Oh, when my Jesus I shall see When I look upon one who saved me by his grace When he takes me by the hand And leads me through that promised land What a day, a glorious day that will be Yes, what a day a glorious day that will be. Praise the Lord. What a day that's going to be, but I'm going to tell you something. We're about to have a night right here because our pastor, Brother Kevin Beck, is been, going to come and bring the Word of God. So let's make him welcome. You know, when we look around at what's happening in the world tonight, surely people ought to be turning to God. People ought to be seeking the Lord. Sometimes we feel, you feel like I do, sometimes we feel like it's an, uh, it's an uphill climb. The tremendous battle that we're in for truth and for right. And sometimes we feel alone, don't we? And we wonder how many will stay true to God. Especially as we know the Scripture's prophetic description of our day. You know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, 
unholy. We're living in that day, aren't we? Without natural affection, truce bakers, false accusers, and contentment, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but not denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Surely we are in the time of fulfillment. Those defecting from the faith. Those who are cavemen. Modern day cavemen are men and women who are caving in. Leaving the faith. I recall in the scriptures when Elijah had fought, fought the battle on Mount Carmel. You remember? God answered by fire. And yet Elijah's battles weren't over. Elijah allowed the threats of Jezebel to bring fear into his heart and to cast him down. But God came. And God showed up and God revived Elijah spoke to him. God, what didn't come as thunder, he came as a still, small voice. And then he gave these words to encourage Elijah. The Bible records them in 1 Kings 19. God says, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal. And every mouth which hath not kissed him. You see, God had a remnant which would not bow to false gods, would not cave into the pressure to give in and to lose faith. Church, I believe that God has a remnant yet today. Those who won't cave in, those who won't bend or bow and thank God won't burn. Those who will love the truth of God. Those who love the God of truth. Those who won't be seduced by the spirit of deception. And those who are on the highway of holiness, not willing to compromise, not going to take the detours of the devil or get on slippery slopes of modernism. My friend, we are in troubling days. But God has a remnant. Isaiah chapter 1 tonight, Isaiah the first chapter. If you would, let's stand as we begin this great prophetic book of Isaiah. Let's begin tonight in verse 4. Hear the word of the Lord. Ah, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even under the head there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Notice verse 7. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. I desire your prayers tonight. I mean, God has laid this on my heart deeply. And tonight I desire to speak to you about 
the holy remnant. The holy remnant. Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you. We pray tonight for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to bring illumination to the Word. Strengthen all of us. Strengthen believers tonight. Encourage your people, dear God. Help us, Lord, to put on the armor of God. Help us to withstand the attacks of the evil one. Help us to overcome. And dear God, help us all to be faithful. I pray tonight, Lord, that this message would find a place. Dear God, where it would be designed to go to bring back the wanderer back to God. Lord, to help that weary one tonight. To hold on, to hang on, to not give up, to not let up. Tonight we pray for the fresh anointing of the Lord to be poured out upon us. Lord, tonight we pray, O oh God, for a heaven-sent Holy Ghost revival. Lord, shake us and awake us tonight out of spiritual slumber. Dear God, tonight, give victory tonight. And thank God that in the name of Jesus there is authority and power. So, Lord, just guide our thoughts tonight. Be Bless your people. Feed your flock. We give you all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A basic definition of the word remnant as defined in the in, as in the dictionary remnant means a small remaining quantity of something in the bible encyclopedia it defines remnant with these words what is left the rest the residue Remnant means those remaining. Through the Bible, we come to see that God has always had a remnant of people. Those that would remain. Those that would hold true. Those whom God knew He could count on. For example, in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, the Bible records in verse 27, And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. In other words, though the people of God were scattered, they held true to God. Amongst unbelievers, there were those who still trusted God. Amongst those that didn't believe, Amongst those that uh, were scoffers against those. Do we not have that today? You know, today we hear the rumblings, and I hear it. I hear it in the spiritual realm, and I hear spiritual people talk about rumors. And then I hear those words, the mark of the beast. I don't know if you've heard that lately. We've been hearing that where people will be forced to do something or receive something and they're calling it the mark of the beast. You know, it's very popular teaching in the Christian realm. And those that don't receive the mark of the beast will meet great punishment for refusing. But I believe that we need to have our spiritual eyes open. Listen, God's remnant are those who refuse to let down their guard. God's remnant are those in the Bible who will stay true to Christ. God's remnant are those that are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and sealed by God. We know, my friend, that we are in troubling times, but I want to tell you, there, are, there is a cause for something within the people of God to rise up, to stay true to God, to hold on in spite of what the rest of the world is doing. Is it any coincidence that in the Bible, in John chapter 6, verse 66, uh-oh, I think is a great definition. If we would be spiritual to understand, it says, From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. I want to tell you, what could be worse than that? You see, there were many who walked with Jesus in that day in person. They had the very Son of God 
They could listen to. They could touch. They could feel. He could touch them. They could feel his breath speaking to him. They saw his miracles. They witnessed what he could do. But the Bible says from that time, many of his disciples, they went back. They turned back. They caved in. They left their first love. They defected from the faith. In the next verse, Jesus looks at the twelve and he says, Will you also go away? I want to tell you tonight, my friend, I don't get caught up too much in modern day prophecy. I don't let people scare me. But one thing that I am determined to do, my friend, is that I'm going to follow Jesus all the way. I'm not going to be a part of those who defect, and I don't want to. And, and by, by all means, we, we, need to, we need to stay true to God. We need to stay humble to God. And we need to stay dependent upon God. The Apostle Paul experienced defectors. Paul knew about what it meant to, to have those that would once love God in turn. For example, in 2 Timothy 4.10 it says, Paul mentions by name. He says, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world and has departed unto Thessalonica. Friend, I want to tell you, it is a terrible thing to once know God and to walk away from God. And yet, in spite of that, I'm glad that God still has a remnant. Those that will stay true to God. Those that will keep the faith. Speaking of spiritual war warfare that we must face. Listen, we are in spiritual warfare. The Bible declares unto us, as Denzel quoted out of Revelation 12. It says down in verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of God, and the power of His Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And the Bible says in verse 11, And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives even unto the death. My friend, we are in that day. Where God's true people are going to have to do spiritual warfare in order to overcome. We can't afford to let up. We can't afford to become lazy. We can't afford to let down, my friend. Souls are at stake. It goes on to tell us in that chapter of the Bible in verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant. Notice, the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Listen, friend, we are not in a kid glove boxing match. We are in a warfare of all warfares, a battle of the ages, where Satan, he is wroth against the children of God. He comes against the church. Friend, please hear the heart of your pastor tonight. If you're going to follow Christ, the devil's going to fight you. And he will pour his wrath out against those who have the testimony of Jesus. Paul said, and he warned us in Ephesians 6, where he said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. And then he outlines the armor of God, the spiritual armor. Stand therefore, Verse 14, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith and the sword, 
uh, and having, where was I? <laughs> Taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. And take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication of the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. In other words, listen, God will enable you to stand so that you can withstand. Those who don't withstand the wiles and wickedness of the devil are those that are refused to stand with Christ. Take the example of those three furnace walkers, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They're an inspiration to keep faithful to God. They're an example to us to keep true to God. You see, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego is more than a, just a cute Bible story. You see, they face pressure to cave in just like we face pressures. They first faced persecution for their faith in God. They were threatened with the furnace. But thank God they wouldn't bend. They wouldn't bow. And the Bible says they wouldn't burn. They held on to God. I know I recently preached on this. But I want to remind you. They stayed the course with God. And because of that God came through for them. I can tell you tonight my friend. If you'll stay true to God. God will come through for you. The Bible says in Daniel, the third chapter, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Man, I'll tell you, when the fourth man showed up, they were loosed. They didn't run out of the fire. They were walking around in the fire. Brother, I'll tell you what, where, he, where Jesus is, it's worth sticking around. The Bible says they had no hurt on them. You see, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego was not the only ones that knew the fourth man showed up. They knew when the Lord showed up. But the Bible says King Nebuchadnezzar knew the Lord showed up. You see, friend, that's what the world needs to see. The prophecy of Isaiah was given at a time where God saw the rebellion of Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. God had seen the rebellion and God was aware of their sin and God was giving them a warning. I believe that God has given America a warning tonight. Those that have ears will hear. Here in Isaiah, notice in verse 4, the word of the Lord says, Ah, sinful nation of people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are gone away backward. Friend, I want to tell you, I believe that we're living in the same time and the same day. We are living in a day where there is a spiritual famine. There is a famine for the Word of God. There is a famine for the truth and the meat of the Word of God. I can tell you this, man. I love dessert. Julie made a a strawberry cake the other day and she said, you're going to have a piece tonight? And I said, a piece? I done ate three pieces. It about made me sick. How many know you can't live on desserts? You can't live on sugar puffs. You can't live on baby roots, my friend. You've got to get into the meat of the Word of God. A famine today is where sin is eating at the core of our nation, eating at the very homes. Fear has gripped many, and even preachers are afraid to preach the truth. We need a real shaking of heavenly proportion. We need a spiritual awakening, my friend, much like in the days of the early church when they refused to defect 
and be defeated. And the Bible records in Acts 4.31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, and they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the Word of God with boldness. Friend, I want to tell you, God had a remnant of believers then, and God has a remnant of believers tonight. The God that answered them is willing to answer again tonight. Just as He has before, I know He'll do it again. In just in the last 10 years, just in the last 10 years of pastoring, and I've been pastor now for 22 years, but just in the last 10, I have witnessed many who once walked with God slip back on God. And I've seen it in preachers. I won't name names. Just in the last 10 years, I, I've seen the demise of camp meetings. For the most part, they're non-existent. I feel like if we want to have a camp meeting, we ought to have a camp meeting. I mean an old-fashioned Holy Ghost camp meeting. And I think God's blessed us with enough singers around here and enough preachers, we can have a camp meeting. I've seen the, in the last 10 years the demise of revivals. And then revivals are scheduled, but pastors can't find those with a burden. Amen? We were talking about the service this morning, and, and I, I, I looked at Julie and I said, you know, I was battling whether I should cut it short or not, because I was just feeling like, you know, I know how people are. And she looked at me and she said, you know, think about it. When, when games go into overtime, do people leave? Why is it when it... The clock strikes 12, people want to get out. It's like they just want to turn God off. I've witnessed in the last 10 years many strong soldiers for God pass on. My question tonight to you is this. Where's the holy remnant? Where's the holy remnant? Isaiah sees here, notice in verse 7, Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your present, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Can I tell you tonight, worse than people burning up places in our country, as we have witnessed in the last few weeks and worse, than places being overthrown and worse than all the injustice that we see happening, worse than the rioting and the looting, is the church is allowing the thief to come in and overthrow her sacred altar to God. In other words, when we give up the message of truth, when we leave off holiness unto the Lord, when we don't think living sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost is needful, and when we begin to look to the world instead of God, the enemy comes in in our weakness, and he begins to render the work of God null and void. And we see that happening in churches everywhere. Friend, I'm concerned that it can happen here if it's not happening already. Where's the holy remnant? Look, Isaiah says there, in verse 9, Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. I don't probably need to go into how bad Sodom and Gomorrah was. But I can tell you, folks, we're right there. We're right there. We, we hear so much that we're getting, we're getting numb to it. We see sin on TV like a regular occurrence, and it doesn't bother us anymore. But I thank God He has a remnant. Those who aren't willing to allow Sodom reasoning in their heart and in their life. You see, God's Word will keep the church on course. God's people will have to 
be willing to lay hold of God and His Word regardless of the price. I think of those four that took hold of the corner. You remember that paralytic man? And they got that man to Jesus. They were determined to do whatever they had to do to get to Jesus. And friend, I want to tell you, it's going to take some determination like that in the church again that we're determined to do whatever it takes that we will get people to Jesus. We can't change people, but Jesus Christ surely can. I want to tell you, God is looking for those that are willing not to bend to this world, not to give in, and not to compromise, but to be strong and to listen to the voice of God instead of the voice of this world. Friend, God is looking for a remnant of people. My question tonight is, will you be willing? There's no doubt others need Jesus and they need Him everywhere. All around us people are in need of a relationship with Christ. I mean a real salvation experience. And friend, we can't lead and introduce people to the man if we're not living for him ourselves. I liken it to this. I'd rest whether I even ought to tell you the story, but I'll go ahead. A couple of years ago, I had shot a deer, and it had ran... It had ran a couple, uh, a couple miles, really. And uh, Denzel, you know what that's like, because I tried to help you find a deer one time. <laughs> and um, came the next day, and I it was I didn't want to see that thing. I mean, I, you know, I just feel like you ought to give every effort to try to find it. And so, for the first time, never done this before. I don't know why, but I decided to take my golden retriever out. And we went the direction that I knew that it went, and it it had actually ran through woods, through somebody's yard, over a street, another, I mean, we're talking a couple miles, into another set of woods. And so we began to look, and it was John and Rocky and I. Rocky's my dog. And I remember we were looking everywhere for that deer, and I had gotten, a, I had gotten split up from my dog and from John, I mean, we were in the thick of stuff. I couldn't see them. They couldn't see me. And pretty soon, I don't know where they were. And they didn't know where I was. And we're still looking. And all of a sudden, I just began to call out to my dog. And brother, I heard something coming. I mean, that thing was tearing through briars and through the thicks. It had crawled under thick branches. It had heard the voice of his master. <laughs> And that dog came to me. He was determined to get to this master. I can tell you tonight, my friend, we've got to be determined to hear the voice of our master no matter the cost through this dark world and through the maze and thick of all the sin that's going on. We've got to hear the voice of Jesus. And we've got to be determined, my friend, to stay with him. And the good news is we did find the deer. You know, this may not be a popular message tonight. Some will think, well, you're just, you're, 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 you're being, you're being uh, too narrow. Well, I can tell you, my friend, God is no respecter of persons. D.S. Warner well put it in that old hymn that he wrote. He said, are you of the holy remnant? Gather to the King of Peace. Have you found a full atonement and abundance of His grace? Yes, my soul has come to Zion on the high and holy way. And I've seen the darkness flying driven by the light of day. Do you know, O ransom brother, that we stand upon the verge where old time fills up his ages and the lost will mourn his dirge oh what myriad souls are sleeping soon to wake in judgment fires help O god thy remnant gleaning until time indeed expires 
How about you tonight? My friend, what are you willing to give God tonight? Why don't you give him that which is most precious? Would you do that? Give him your heart. Give him your heart tonight. That's all he desires. Because if he has your heart, he has you. Would you stand tonight? I'm going to ask you to step out and come and pray tonight, and especially if you're going through battles. And, and the Lord's helped you tonight to see somewhat clear what's going on, the battles you're facing. But you're willing to come and bow and say, Lord, I need your help. Help me to stay true. If you're here tonight and you're being pressured by others to cave in, to compromise, why don't you come? Pray for them. Pray for them. God will enable you. I pray that God would open their eyes and shower His grace upon them. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's friends. Maybe it's your husband or wife tonight. Friend, why don't you draw them closer to God? Bring them tonight in prayer. Mothers, fathers, step out, come pray. Pray for your family tonight. Pray for your home. Pray that God would help us all to stay true to God. Help us to hold on, to hold steady, to keep fighting a good fight of faith. Let's all bow our heads. If you're watching tonight, would you just surrender your life completely to Christ? Allow Him to have full control of your life. And here tonight, would you just surrender your heart and say, Lord, I surrender my love to you. Lord, you've loved me with an everlasting love. You sent Christ to die for me on Calvary. You died for my sins. You arose from the grave. And thank God tonight, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Lord, make each of us part of the holy remnant. Help us not to be ashamed. Help us not to be ashamed. Lord, we are constantly in need of more of you than anything else. And so I pray tonight that you would help us to face God, an angry, demonic, devil-filled world. God, help us to show the love of Christ. And may the glory of God shine through your children. Lord, get them in before it's too late. We pray this in Jesus' name. Before we sing, just step out and come and pray. If you got somebody on your heart you want to pray for, even tonight, you just want to, you just want to commit tonight. Say, Lord, I am committed. I'm committed to walk all the way, to be faithful to you, and I'm not going to turn back. As we sing, would you step and step down here and meet with God? He'll meet with you. Let's sing. Would you flee from sin?
Since he, uh, since he said that, I was, um, I was thinking about this brother ask, uh, that was singing this morning. He brought this song up, and I've been thinking about it all day. I wasn't really planning on singing it, but I was sitting back there the whole service, and I thought, you know, I, I just I look up here sometimes, and we stand up here, and I look back over people, and I see a lot of them. You, you, you may not know that we see, or I don't know what you're going through, or whatever, you know, whatever problems you're going through, but... Um, he, he asked me about this song, and I haven't sung it in a while, and I don't even know what key it's in, but Tony, you can help us uh, sing it. But I, I had this, um, I've been serving the Lord about 39 years, close to 39 years, and uh, Kevin, I'll be honest with you, there's been times in that 39 years that I felt like just kind of giving up and turning around, 
I think anybody that's been a Christian very long has thought that from time to time. But I used to sing this all the time, and um, I've just been thinking about it all day today. And, and if you need prayer or something, just kind of raise your hand up, and one of these brothers come back and pray with you while we're singing it. If you're discouraged or if you're downtrodden or anything, but this is an old song that says, I've been on my way to heaven for a long time. And uh, I'm so glad that I'm not, I'm not give up. I've not turned back. And you know something? God's never gave up on me either. He, he's kept me all those years. And I'm not always the man I should be. I'm not always the man I want to be. But he's always the God I expect him to be. He's always there. So you pray for us. You know it. Yeah. Give me a G. That seems very common. Let me see if that's right. I've been on my way to heaven for a long, long time, and many things have happened that's clouded up my mind, but I am more determined to walk the narrow way. I've got more to go. The golden street to walk upon a bell I'm gonna ring. A brand new angel in the choir. I wanna hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends waiting when I walk through the gate. This is a real hard part to try to dismiss this. I don't know, but if you can't shout, you must be dead tonight. That's all I can say because I'm going to tell you something. I normally don't do this, but our pastor, he heard from the commander. God Almighty with this message about the remnant. And I'm going to tell you something. He said it already. Will you also go away? Satan wants you to. He's going to try to get you to. But listen to what the pastor said tonight according to God. It's not his words. It's God's word. But he's obedient to God and that's what we need today. There's many men that God called and they've walked away. Brother Beck is here. God is here. We're here. Will you go away? That's up to you. I pray you've heard the wonderful message tonight. You've been moved by the Spirit. Pray for our pastor and his wonderful family because I guarantee you that same devil that wants you to walk away wants them to walk away. But I got this feeling they're not going to. Praise God. Amen. That's right. Well, praise the Lord. Y'all be careful throughout the week until Wednesday. You can pray and everything until then, but Wednesday night if you can't come back, because I guarantee you, you're going to miss something wonderful if you don't come back. 
Amen. It's been wonderful to be here today. It's really helped me. It challenged me. Because, as Brother said here, I want to go to heaven. I've got a lot waiting on me. There's nothing here. And I pray you feel the same way. So if all hearts are clear, as bad as I hate to say it, we're going to have to let our pastor and his wife walk to the back. Be sure to tell them you love them. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to dismiss I don't want to do that, but you got to, amen. We got to go home, get ready for what we have to do. But remember this when you go out to where you have to tomorrow, whether you go to work, the grocery, or wherever you go, tell somebody about Jesus and tell somebody about this congregation. This is where they need to come, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Brother Jack, you want to come up here and dismiss us in word? Absolutely, brother. Dear Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to be in your house today with God's people. It's a precious thing that we take for granted so many times. But God, you gave us a good day of worship. You gave us a good day of fellowship. You allowed us to get out of our houses this morning and come this way. You kept us safe in the storms. God, you gave us the word to be fed by. Now, God, all we have to do is to go out into the highways and the hedges and preach the gospel. That's where the mission field is. It's not here. This is a filling station. Out there is the mission field. And I pray that we would take what we got today, what we got fed with today, and take it out into the world and spread it around the world. There's, they need hope. Lord, the world needs hope. It's, and we have it. We have it. And all we got to do is share it. And I pray today, Lord, you would help us, Lord, as Paul said. And for me, that you would give me the spirit of boldness that I might be able to go out and speak that word that I've heard today. And God, I pray that you'd help our congregation to come to one mind, one body, and one accord in everything that we do and give you honor, glory, and praise because you're worthy to be praised. And Lord, as we dismiss tonight, I just want to lift my hands today with the congregation and say praise the Lord. Let's say praise the Lord together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, brother.